our campus, and I'm, I'm excited to have you join us today. Um, I am going to be um, talking to you about how to get your books and supplies. So I have a PowerPoint presentation, so I'm going to talk, I'm going to show you that for a little first few slides, and then I'm going to actually log into the bookstore website and walk you through how to set up your account um, and those kinds of things. So if you have any questions, please feel free to unmute yourself or Kim, would you review the chat? So um, for those of you, there's a little chat box down at the bottom. If you're like, oh, I don't know that I want to unmute myself and say anything, just type something into the chat and Kim will let me know if we have questions, but this is for you. So make sure that you, um, that you ask away. Um, I am going to be honest and upfront. I have a new computer set up in my office and I haven't shared my screen with that. So if we have some glitches, I may have to do some things differently, but I'm hopeful, um, I'm hopeful we'll get it right here. So, all right, can everybody see my PowerPoint presentation? Let's see, I can't. Can you give me a thumbs up, maybe if you can see it? Perfect. All right. Dawn, so, Dawn, yeah. you may want to start the um, from the, the beginning. So okay. to get rid of your slideshow on the side. Okay. Did that stay? No. Nope. Um, hmm. Oh, yep. Just a minute. Hang on. I I just have to slide this over. I think. Hmm. All right. Otherwise it doesn't matter, but we do see all your slides on the side. So, yeah. Well, because when I, I was, when I practiced it, it goes on my second screen. So let's see, let's try this one more time. How's that? Is that better? Can you see the full slide? All right, I think I think we're good. So I'm going to go ahead and get started and, and hope that we're okay here. So once again, thank you for joining us. Sorry for the technical difficulties. Um, the first couple of slides, I'm just um, going to, I mean, I'm going to move my camera here too. So over here where my... You are good, by the way, Dawn, so... Okay, sounds good. All right, so here we go. So first of all, um, I want to tell you that all books are going to be ordered online. So you'll be able to do that on our website. So the first thing that you're going to need when you do that is you need to have your class schedule with you. And so you can get that in e-services um, and you can print that out. If you need help with that, we are absolutely um, happy to help you. Then what you'll do is you're going to go to our college bookstore um, website from the Ridgewater page, and you're going to set up an account. So if you've never bought books here before, you will um, go in and it's, it's like setting up any other online account. So maybe Amazon or something like that. Um, I'll show you the next page here. So this is what it's going to look like. And I'm going to walk you through, but this is, this is where you're going to be at. So I'm going to stop sharing and now I'm going to share um, the Ridgewater website. Okay, can you see the Ridgewater website now? Yes, we can. Okay, great. So I'm going to be clicking through this again. I'm going to be clicking through some screens. So if at any time we don't advance, please let me know. So this is the Ridgewater um, web page. And what you're going to do is you're going to go across here to the bookstore and you're going to click on that link right there. And that will take you to this bookstore page. A lot of the things I'm talking about today are 
listed in a link, an online uh, book ordering instructions here. So it's something that you can go back to. Kim is already also recording this, but just wanted to, to know that that's there as well. So you're gonna click on the Shop the Ridgewater College Bookstore. And did that change? All right, yeah. so we're here, and then you're gonna go to my account. So for those of you that have not been on our Ridgewater website or haven't set up an account, this is what you're gonna do. So you're gonna put in your email address. Um, oh, here, we're gonna click on create our account. So we're gonna click on a profile for browsing and shopping. So this is how you set up your account. So you'll put in your email address here. Oops. And then you have to confirm your email address. And then you have to come up with a password. And passwords have to be changed every 90 days. So you'll wanna, just like everything else, you wanna be aware of that. Um, and then they'll want you to do a challenge question. And then you're gonna put in billing address. And this is really important. So. If you are using a credit card that's not yours, that's not the same as the shipping address, the billing address needs to match up with the credit card holders. So sometimes we have students that maybe um, their parents or a spouse, the ad, that it's their address. So you need to make sure that that is accurate. So that's gonna be the billing address for the credit card. The shipping address, is where you want your books shipped to. So where is it? Um, so everybody, they want everybody to order their books online. You have two options. You can pick them up at the, at the bookstore of your choice, Hutchinson or Wilmer, or you can have it shipped. And the first order ships free. So it's really convenient. So if you can get them ordered, they will be delivered um, to you. It's $10 per shipment after that, but the first order does ship free. And then you're gonna need your um, student ID number. So that is gonna be your eight digit number. Um, so it's not your star ID, which is two letters, four numbers, two letters. It's gonna be your student ID and it's eight digits. So if you have um, your student ID card, it would be on there. If you're a new student with us, it's in your acceptance letter. It will be, this is, this is what your student ID is. If you say, I have no idea what that is, I need some help, call us. Just call the front desk. If you give them the, your star ID, they'll be able to give you that student ID. Um, graduation year, that can be, what you think it's going to be. It's just an estimate of, of, what, of what you think, how long you're going to be here. And then your degree goal. So maybe you're just taking classes, maybe you're doing a certificate, whatever. It, it doesn't matter what you put there. Um, and then you can opt in or out of email, and then you submit your profile. Um, so, and that you want to be really careful about your email address. I'll mention this again, but what we have, we find, sometimes find students think they have to use their Ridgewater email. And then if you don't put it in correctly, you won't get notification that your books are ready and available for you. It, it, it bounces back. So you won't know. So that's really, um, that really doesn't, doesn't work very well. So once you have your account, that's how you order things. So let's, um, I'm not going to set up an account because I don't want to be in there, but that's how you do it. Um, I'm going to go to buy textbooks. So once you have an account set up, you'll have to read through these terms and conditions and then agree to go any further. So click agree. 
And here are, again, here's some directions. So if you get in it and get stuck, our books, you could start ordering, ordering them on Saturday, August 7th. So anytime you can log in now and you will be able to get that started. And so what you'll do is you need to have um, your, your course schedule. So let's say you're taking CMST, which is a communication studies course. Um, here's just a pop-up. It says that you can start ordering them now. The last day to charge against your financial aid is August 27th, which is the drop ad period. Um, and we'll go over that a little bit um, more as well. Um, online orders are processed Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. And then the first order ships free, as I talked about, or you can pick them up. And you, they want to make sure that you get your confirmation that your books are ready before you, um, before you come in to pick them up. And then you need a picture ID. So your student ID, your driver's license, any kind of an ID that has your picture on it, um, you are available. To, or that's what you have to have in order to get your book. So you click, I understand. And then what you're going to do is I didn't put in, um, most of you will say it's going to be CMST 1210, and then you're going to look for the section number. Because even though it's the same course, they all have different, they may have different books. So you really want to pay special attention to the course, num um, the four digit or the, the letters and the numbers and then the section numbers. And then once you find your section number, um, and it might have some different options too. This is actually a physical textbook. And I'm gonna talk about that in um, a couple slides, all the different kind of books that we have. But once you find the book you want, um, you add it to your cart. So that's now added to your cart. Um, and then you go back and you do the next, the next one. Um, so let's see, I'm gonna try to pull up a book that has, so here's all the sections for biology and I'm gonna try to look for a book that has both an online um, a ebook as well as a physical book. I think this one does. Just going to put some courses into my cart here. So I'm gonna, these are the four courses or the three courses. And if you do view your materials, it's asking me to understand again. So here are the options. So for art, you there's an art kit that you have. So here's the cost of that. And you have to click on that little button to add it to your cart. So here you'll notice this particular biology, you have two options. So you have um, an online, so it's an access code that you can buy. So that is an ebook. So that's not gonna be a physical book that you put in your backpack, that's gonna be an electronic. And you'll notice that's cheaper typically than here is um, a physical book. And you'll notice the physical book has some options. So you can do a textbook, which you buy, or you can rent. And if you rent your book, that goes back to the bookstore at the end of the semester. And then you'll have to do a rental agreement. And then, um, and it, it says that you choose either this loo loose leaf textbook or an access code. So, um, you know, you just choose one of those. And again, down here on under economics, it's the same kind of a thing you have to choose. You either a book or an electronic access code. 
And you'll see not every book has um, a rental option. Some books have new and used options. And I'll talk a little bit more about that um, later. And then you do continue to check out. So in here, it says that they calculate the costs on new prices. If there's used prices and you want that, they will try to accommodate, but used books are unlimited. Um, and then here, this is important. It says, in the event that the instructor changes the material for your course, how would you like us to update your order? So add only the required materials, add all the materials. So sometimes instructors have an optional or if you don't want them to add that at all. If we substitute, um, so let's say they don't have what you, what you wanted. They wanna know, do you want used or new? What your option would be there? So lots of questions. And then you um, continue here with payment options. And that's where it will make you have an account and then you put in, you put in your materials there. Does anybody have any questions about this? There's nothing in the chat right now. Feel okay. Free. All right, so I am going to go back to uh, my PowerPoint presentation here. Okay, so I'm going to move my camera back over here. All right, so I so I wanted to talk a little bit about textbook options. So you you will have lots of choices as you saw as we go through the bookstore website. So. These are your options. So you'll be able to choose a new book, which is brand new. Um, this is usually always available and it's gonna be the most expensive option because it's brand new. Um, and there's not always used textbooks available for each class. And I think um, publishers change the edition. And if the edition changes, there sometimes isn't used books. Um, so that makes things, um, I think, more expensive. Um, so used books are going to be books that students have used, other students have used in the past, and the bookstores bought them back. They're typically in limited quantities, but they're typically cheaper than new books. So some of them are going to be pristine if a student didn't highlight, but you may get a book that's got highlight and some writing in it. It's usable, but depending on who had the book prior to you, yeah, you'll be able to see it's different. Rental. So we did see that on the drop down menu that you can rent books. So what you do is you pay a reduced fee, but then you need to return that book at the end of the semester. And so there's a, a return period for that. Um, and you don't get to keep the book. So you want to think about, am I taking a class where I would like the book for future reference, perhaps? Or is this a course where I don't think that I'll be using it or I won't need it again. Um, and the last option is e-textbooks, which is something new. I know when I was in college, um, my backpack was full and it was heavy. Um, there were no e-textbooks. E and now, as you saw, um, there are lots of classes that have that option. So those can be downloaded to your device or some you just log in and you access that material. Again, it's typically cheaper. Um, to have that and your backpack is lighter because you're not carrying those books around. So I want to talk a little bit about the pros and the cons of e-textbooks and, and what we hear from students. So if you're thinking about an e-textbook, you can keep all your books in one spot. So if you have a computer, you have a laptop, 
um, your backpack is going to be much lighter if you're going to be on campus. It's portable, it's easy to carry around. If you happen to be on campus and a class is canceled, so, um, and that happens on occasion, an instructor gets sick or family member gets sick, um, and you came to class thinking you were going to have two, or came to school thinking you're going to have two classes, let's say, on Monday, and you have also have classes Tuesday, Thursday, maybe you didn't bring your Tuesday, Thursday book, but now you have this gift of time and you have assignments due for those classes, you would be able to log in and access that even though you don't have the textbook um, with you. So e-textbooks typically aren't downloaded, so you just log into a website. So um, you don't have that on your device, which can be good. Um, you can access at any time, but you do need access to the internet, um, maybe high speed internet, depending on what kind of materials in incorporated into that book. And the other thing you want to be aware of is you may not be able to access it on multiple devices. Um, some they're worried about. So let's say you buy an e-textbook and you share that code with six of your friends and you've got six different computers logging on, that could be an issue at some point. It may not, but it could be. Um, updates are easy. Since the book is based in the cloud, content can be fixed, updated, and you'll have access to the most recent content. Printed books, sometimes there's an error in it and um, you there's no way to fix it because you have the books. Um, ebooks are typically cheaper than print book, um, and there's no shipping or delivery costs. And at Ridgewater, delivery costs are, it's free for your first one. So that's not really a, a point. Um, E-textbooks, some of them have interactive features, which can make it more engaging for some of us. You might have audio, video, links to different websites and those kinds of things. And sometimes students like that. Um, they think that that's helpful for them. So some cons of using an e-textbook, um, for some of us reading on a device can cause eye strain and fatigue or if we're hunched over our computer or our iPad or whatever it is, um, it can be difficult. Um, you need to have access to technology and internet, likely high-speed internet. Um, for your e-textbooks, you can't resell them. So that's something that you buy a code to, and depending on the course, it might be one semester or it might be the year or two semesters, depending on the course. Um, if you buy a brand new textbook, for example, you may be able to sell that back. It's usually not nearly what you paid for it, which is frustrating for those of us that are college students, but you typically can, can sell it back. Not always, but typically. Um, E-textbooks are very close to other distractions like social media, games, or entertainment that might be on our computer or our device. Um, most e-textbooks are only available for one semester. So if you, let's say you're going into the nursing program and you think that you want your anatomy book for reference for when you start the nursing program, you wouldn't go back, you wouldn't be able to go back in and access that content. So that, that might be a deterrent for you. And lastly, most e-textbooks cannot be printed. So um, some of us um, that went to college a long time ago, or um, I like to print things out now and I highlight, I see Kim smiling. Um, she maybe feels the same way. I like paper copies and I like to take notes and those kinds of things. So um, it's just a preference. It's not right or wrong, but you really wanna think about not only looking at the price, the cost, what is going to be the best option for you based on your educational goals and long term plans. So things to keep in mind when you're um, when you're getting your books, so you can pick up books at either campus if you want. So make sure that you put in your correct email and we don't care whether it's Ridgewater or your personal email, but it's correct. So you will first get an email that says, thank you, we have gotten your order. We'll send you um, another email confirmation when it's time to pick up. You wanna make sure and wait for that confirmation. They process orders as quickly as you can, but you don't wanna come here, make a drive and wait. Um, as I said, the first order ships free. So that's great. Um, the second and subsequent orders are $10. Um, if your financial aid is in and in place, 
you can charge up to $1,000 if you have enough to cover those costs. Um, I don't, I've worked here for 27 years. I don't think I've ever had a student that has done um, charge that much, but whatever you need, as long as the money is there, you would be able to, to charge against that. So what does that mean? So if your financial aid is in and set, we know how much you're getting. So they'll take a look and they'll say, this is what the tuition is. And they'll look at what the overage is. So once they pay your tuition and fees, how much is left? And then whatever that amount is, you can charge up to that and books and supplies. So supplies include, you can get up to, you can get one backpack. If there's some other things that you might need, you'd be able to, to you do that against your financial aid. And then you don't have to pay out of pocket. So they would just deduct that from your financial aid. And then if there's any overage after that, that would um, go to you. Um, hopefully you've set up direct deposit. So that would go into your bank account after the 10th day of the semester. So school starts on August 23rd. So you have five days to come and try your classes. So you can come to class, you can sit there, um, and maybe you decide, oh, this class isn't for me, or I have a two o'clock section and now there's an opening at nine and I want to make that change. You can absolutely positively make that change and you can return and exchange your books with some um, except or with some things to keep in mind. So first of all, you need to have your receipt. They will not return anything without a receipt. So keep your receipt. Second of all, um, if a book is in shrink wrap, the only way you can return that is if it has not been opened. So if you have any reservations about a course that um, has books in shrink wrap, don't open them. Go to class the first or second day, make sure that, or attend online, or um, if it's synchronous, you sit down and you have a Zoom, um, sit, uh, don't open them. Because if you open them, you're stuck with it, even if you change um, classes. And then the drop ad period ends at four o'clock on Friday, August 27th. So you can change your classes if you want, and you can change your books as long as, you know, they're in like new. So if you didn't uh, drop them in a mud puddle and drive over them, you should be able to, to ex uh, exchange those with however you worked your schedule. Um, make sure that you use a valid email address. Um, again, if you're not sure about your Ridgewater account, if this is your first time here at Ridgewater and you're worried about that being accurate, use your personal one because we want to make sure you get your books on time. Um, your student ID is that eight digit student ID number. So make sure if you don't know if you need help with what that is, we can certainly help you. Um, the billing address has to match the address of the credit card holder. So make sure that that you've got that. The shipping address, where do you want the books shipped to? You must have a photo ID to pick up your books. Um, so it's important that you do that and you come prepared with a photo ID. Passwords for your bookstore account, they need to be changed every 90 days. So, um, you know, you use it now for fall semester. And then when you go in and order books for spring semester, you'll need to change that. Um, and I know how frustrating it is. We all have so many passwords around here, but it's for your safety and security. Um, credit and debit cards. It will ask to have a credit or debit card in there. And that is if your financial aid doesn't cover. If you have enough financial aid to cover, it will not be charged to that, um, but it will ask for a credit or debit card um, as a secondary payment. And that is it as far as the information that I had. So what kind of questions do you have about anything that we talked about? Um, Kim, Johanna, did there's anything that I missed that you think I should cover? So, Don, I uh, unfortunately had a previous meeting, so I hopped on a little late. Okay. Um, I'm just wondering, did you talk about shrink wrap books? So those have to stay shrink wrapped? Okay. I did. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for checking, though. That's um, really important. I was just going to bring up the... Um, I'm gonna bring it up and I'm gonna share with you just that document on the bookstore again. Um, 
and we can put the link, I'll put the link to this in the chat. Um, but let me get back here. All right, does everybody see the bookstore, Ridgewater College? So this is out on our bookstore. Um, just gonna be some reminders. So if you are um, like me that likes to have something, I'm a visual person, so I like to have something to look at. So here is just, um, here are some things, just more step-by-step um, kinds of instructions, and I'm going to put that in our chat. So there's a question in the chat too about where you pick up your books. Probably everybody would like to know that too. So. Absolutely. So um, on the Wilmer campus, it's in building A, right across from the student services desk. So when you walk in the front door, um, the bookstore is right there. Um, I have to look and see so that you can walk in the front door. Sometimes they have people at the window. I haven't looked to see what they're up. I think the window's not open yet. Um, yes, I'm not sure about that either. Uh, Johanna, okay. do you happen to know, is the window gonna be open? Um, I, I don't know. I think it depends on capacity just because the bookstore staff is pulling all books now. So, um, but the bookstore is when you come in the, on building A on the Wilmer campus, the bookstore is immediately to your right when you walk in. Um, and there, I, usually there's a sign that says if the window's open to go down the hall. And then on the Hutchinson campus, um, you know, we have one main we have another campus, but the bookstore is at our main campus. So if you go in the front door, you literally will walk all the way to the back of the college and it's a straight line. So you'll go past the, there's a, there will be a student services desk. There'll be a concourse. There'll be an open area with tables and chairs that looks kind of like a cafeteria. And the bookstore is straight ahead and a little bit to your left. And the window and the um, store is right there. Great questions. And I did get that link in that the chat there. So Don, I would just encourage students to consider the Ridgewater Academic Planner. It's five bucks and then they can map everything out. Um, has some bookstore coupons in there, and it has important dates, contact information, a login page, um, resources on time management and counseling. So it's just something for them to consider. Yes, and I just mm -hmm. thought of one other thing. Um, did you, do you want to add something, Kim, before I talk about something else? No, I was I was just going to say thank you, Johanna, for mentioning that, because yeah. planners are so important to keep yourself on task. So. Yeah, the other thing that I was going to mention is um, third party vendor books. So um, sometimes our students, and I'm going to tell you a personal story about my son, think that they can go um, to Amazon or some, there are third party book places that are cheaper or appear to be cheaper. So I'm going to tell you first the story about my son doesn't go to Ridgewater, but goes to a different college. Um, so he ordered a book online. Um, and it was cheaper, not, I mean, it was not substantially, but it was cheaper. Um, and it was cheaper because he needed an online code to access some of the information. And what we found is that the online code was only good for 30 days. So in order to extend that online code through the end of the semester, it was an additional $150. So by the time we took what he paid for the book, and then he called because he had no money. Mom, can you, I need this code. I need $150. That was really his only option is to pay that or to buy the book at the at his college bookstore. So that ended up costing us quite a bit of money in that regard. And we did have one student here on our Wilmer campus 
that was in the accounting program and she ordered her book online um, and it was cheaper. But when she got the book, the currency was not US dollars, it was in rubles. And so it was a different, it was a foreign currency and they wouldn't take it back because they said, well, that that's, that's the book that we sell. So she ended up again, buying another book here at the college. So her cost was almost double as what it would have been. Um, so it's, um, you just want it, it can be cheaper, but it can be a lot of headaches too. Um, so you just want to be aware, aware of that and really ask some good questions about that. Okay, um, unless someone else has another question or um, I guess we can wrap it up for today. Anybody have anything? Just feel free to unmute yourself and ask a question if you if you have one. And it doesn't have to be about books. If there's yeah, something else true. that you have a question that's about true. between the three of us, um, we can probably answer that. Um, the other thing that I would tell you is that many times when you attend a presentation like this or as you're coming up to school, um, you know, you think of, oh my gosh, did they talk about this? Or I have a question about that? Or what do I do? Please, that all of us that, uh, Johanna and Kim and myself, we're in student services and our jobs are to help students be successful and meet their goals. And so if we don't know the questions that you have, we can't be helpful, but know that we sit here and wait. Um, there's no such thing as a silly question or a dumb question. Um, we mm -hmm. want to help you and we want we want you to, to have what you need and feel comfortable when school starts. Okay, well, um, and you can always contact us as well um, with questions you might think of. So you have my email address. It's on the uh, link that I sent you for the um, presentation today, so the workshop today. But thank you again for joining us. Um, and have and good luck with the start of the semester. We have one more workshop left next week, and it's kind of a really important one for uh, online students. And if you're new to online, um, it's our platform D2L, and so we're going to be learning about that next week. So, if you haven't um, registered for it, uh, please do so. Okay, thank you, thank everybody. You. Have a great day.